This is Hidden Killers Week in Review. A look back at the most prolific stories of the week. Welcome to the podcast. If you'd like to listen to an ad-free version of this episode and all of our episodes, then search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. That's our premium channel where all of our ad-free and advanced episodes live all in one place. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Search it on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. Even try it for three days free. The last thing they saw was someone they trusted. You're tuned in to Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi, featuring retired FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. Yeah, not a conspiracy <laughs> person, but what the hell are we covering up here? I mean, I know, are, are we covering up a murder? Are we covering up bad police work? I mean, that's what I'm wondering. Like, did I've said this in the beginning on this case. Is this just one where at the beginning so many mistakes were made and then, well, we'll just cover this up here. Oh, shit. We got to cover this up to cover that up. Oh, crap. And it just keeps layering, 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 layering yeah. until we get to where we're at today. And it's so out of control. Nobody even knows what they're originally covering up. Yeah. And we've and we've talked about this with other cases as well, where in some instances you have departments that are just inherently corrupt and bad, which mm -hmm. I think is our case up in Boston with, um, with the uh, Karen Reed case. Yeah. You know, we see a lot of missteps with a department. There's a lot of ugliness going on there. And then you have other cases where I think we've had departments that have either by laziness, necessity of other investigations are more higher profile. We have limited bandwidth that just got lazy on a case. And so they didn't think it was a big deal. So they they said, hey, we got an easy confession here. Let's just kind of roll with it. And then it just snowballs out of control. Mm -hmm. I'd like to think that this is the case on this one because I, again, I don't like thinking that we have a lot of internal corruption going on. Maybe this was just a case of some lazy investigation early on. That's why we have missing tapes of interviews mm -hmm. <laughs> and not accepting alternative. And also taking an easy route with him because he, he's literally the only person they could even find in the location nearby. Maybe I just, and he's he admitted to sense. being there. He came to them to, to help. I know. That, that, and that's it, the other and that part That doesn't fit it. a profile either. None, none of, of it. it. Just, none of it fits to say it's him. Now, again, not saying it is or isn't, but just, it just doesn't fit anything we've ever seen. I just end up wondering at some point of, the, the bad police work here and the bad investigating work that did they dig their holes so deep and they, they pinned it on him so hard and then maybe somewhere they realized, yeah, this doesn't, we don't have a lot here, but we're already this far in and we've already damaged this human being as much as we have. He's going to sue the hell out of us if, mm -hmm. if he is free. And if we suddenly say now, whoops, um, we better damn well get him in prison and make him lose his mind. Uh, otherwise, we're in deep trouble. Um, it ha it's, it, it's happened before. And then uh, we've seen jurisdictions come back and then try uh, to pin something on some. But I mean, it, it reminds me of the, uh, the case out of uh, Green Bay in Manitowoc, Wisconsin, somewhat, uh, the making a murder uh, with Stephen Avery. Uh, he was in prison for a murder. Uh, was released, sued Manitowoc County, got a, a huge million dollar sum judgment. And then, well, we don't want to pay that. Let's try and pin this other murder on him. And he's still in mm -hmm. prison for that one. Um, and Manitowoc didn't have to pay. Uh, so I'm wondering if, if if there's something like that going on here. Delphi's not a big area. If they're looking at this going, this is going to really damage us if he sues us. I'm wondering if that's part of the motivation here too for whatever the hell's going on. I mean, all just conjecture, but... I'm trying yeah, to, I, trying I hate, to connect I dots. I hate it, but it feels that way, doesn't it? There's some it reason. It feels that way. And I don't, I don't like going on feelings. I like going on data. Yeah. But yeah. but again, the and it, the only optic that we have is the data points we get on the outside, not on the inside. But from the data points we're exposed to just through social media and news reports, the data that supports that that's exactly what might be going on. But that's why we'll have to wait to see the trial. Yeah. Um, maybe prosecution has a lot of data points and evidence that were that are make us go. And I completely own it when I'm off on stuff. I, I yeah. get it. I, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping I'm, we're completely wrong. I'm hoping that this is a very, very clear case that there's a lot of reasons that we don't know of because of the investigation. It was very thorough, very ex exhaustive, very complete. And at the end of the day, um, everyone says, yep, that was righteous. Unfortunately, that's not this case. <laughs> <laughs> What's the probability of from what our optic is right now? Yes. Yeah, that didn't happen. That did, there just yeah. what is an investigation that did very much of any of that. Um, yeah. 
So, no, I mean, it will be fascinating. The trial set to begin uh, here on the 14th, which is uh, the week that this is uh, airing, if you're hearing it now. So hopefully it does take place. And we'll, yeah, we'll have to see what happens in court. However, we can see what's happening in court. There's no camera. There's, there, there's no audio. You can't take notes. You can't live tweet. You have to, like, we're, we're heading to old school, basically, but a pen and a notepad, and there's a lot of good reporters that are in there, uh, yeah. including our own uh, Bob Mata, who's a defense attorney. He's going to be on the ground all week. Oh, wow, good. Um, and and we're going to hear about this. We're going to find out what exactly is presented in court, um, and, and we're, we'll see. Maybe there is something that will make all of our heads turn and go, oh, this is why they've been so sure about Richard Allen. I'm not holding my breath for it, but I'm either. I'm leaving the window open. As always, I hope justice is done, and I hope the families that lost their children find peace. Welcome to the podcast. If you'd like to listen to an ad-free version of this episode and all of our episodes, then search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. That's our premium channel where all of our ad-free and advanced episodes live, all in one place. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Search it on Apple Podcasts. And press subscribe. Even try it for three days free. Let's be honest. Nothing kills the thrill of a good murder mystery like a commercial for laundry detergent. It's like someone slapping a closed sign on your favorite dive bar. But you're not here for that, are you? You're here for the good stuff. So ditch the ads and upgrade to True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. With True Crime Today Premium Plus, you get your crime straight. No chaser. Commercial free with extended interviews and early access. It's like getting the bartender's special when the bar's already closed. Search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and drink it all in.